Elefín. Welcome again. We are now listening to Manuel Serrano, who is uh, an IT engineer with 15 years experience in technology on uh, um, uh, data networks and telecommunications. He would speak about the uh, um, impact uh, of uh, connectivity and uh, he will uh, Good afternoon. So please uh, tell me whether you see this. Um, yes, we can see it. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Manuel Serrano. And today I'm going to discuss this topic that is the impact of continuity and the maintenance of good practice of manners through the experience of an academic network operator that is uh, the Autonomous University of Yucatan, Mexico. The University of Yucatan, the Autonomous University of Yucatan, as a, a network operator, was officially accepted on August 28, 2018, as a member of the Manor system. The participation of um, the um, uh, of uh, Wadi in Manors contributes to an improvement of the global route of the internet, and I'm, I'm going to share the experience in recent years. As all the organizations, I had uh, we had changes that affected uh, our uh, work, and we have administrative and operational changes. Among the administrative, we can say that in 2019, we had a restructuring of a coordination of IT, creating and uh, implementing a new general coordination on ITCs, CGTIC, with uh, a point uh, and they appointed a new general coordinator and integrated all uh, the IT staff of the uh, institution. And that led to changes in roles and functions of the staff. We can also say that in 2020, they announced uh, a bidding of links and internet uh, services. So we had these actions. Um, among the significant operational changes, we can indicate that we had a, a plan for restructuring uh, the IPv4 addressing assigned to a campus and our facilities stemming from the growth of the demand of connectivity by the users and the redistribution of the segments that we had recovered and they were unused. As a result of uh, the bidding processes that I mentioned, we had a change of our uh, internet service provider. And in that process, we had different incidences where we were denied access to certain sites and we had IP blocks and DDoS attempts and even an outage of BGP. However, this was also an opportunity for us to propose a new strategy for announcing our IPv4 prefixes assigned to these new facilities um, through the links that were just hired and BGP. Among the actions that we undertook for continuity of operations, we had a meeting with our general coordinator and we presented a report and justification of the benefits of uh, the Manners Initiative. We did re-engineering and we amended and updated uh, our BGP routing for the announcement of our IPv4 prefixes through the links that were already in our campus. We, of course, we had to revoke the prefixes announced uh, with uh, our outgoing ISP and we put them in quarantine for six months. We also monitored our uh, um, own uh, uh, number of resources uh, through uh, tools offered by Manners and LACNIC. Among the actions that we had to implement to maintain the good practices, we worked essentially in two sections of the network operators programs. We uh, acted in filtering, and here we manage the configuration of ACLs uh, of filtering with our new ISP uh, so that it would be enabled in the new links. As to the global validation, we created and updated the ROAs based on the new prefixes that we were announcing. And as to coordination, from the moment that we joined Manners, 
we managed to configure generic institutional accounts so we wouldn't have to change them in the future. So in this section, we didn't have any significant changes. And as to our results and evidence, we can say that there was a change precisely in our IPv4 prefix announcements going from five, the announcement of five to 78 prefixes announced. As to ROAs and their PKI, we realized that when reviewing the prefixes that we were announcing, these were not validated. So, and to verify the ROAs that were allocated at the time, assigned at the time, we noticed that these prefixes announced were not covered by the ROAs. So we, we undertook creating new ROAs and we used, um, um, and we saw that these were already being validated. And then we had the certification of resources. So we belong to Mexico. So we use the portal that is shared between NIC Mexico and LACNIC. And you can use uh, the resources of MILACNIC in Latin America or in those of you from Brazil with NIC Brazil. We also used our validation through a new tool of uh, ROA stats uh, where we could verify that our prefixes were maintained 100% validated. And through the LACNIC RPKI tool, we can identify that we are complying with this measure of coverage of the change of these uh, prefixes to the new 78. What are the pending actions? We have anti-spoofing actions, and we can identify that in September 2021, that is this year, we have 49% compliance with this action. Among the tests that we conducted through the spoofing tools, we saw that we were receiving spoofing, but curiously enough, we in the IPv6 prefix. So we need to check and edit these anti-spoofing techniques, and we have to manage them also with our a new provider. However, prior to this event, we held some activities and actions for these corrections and new tests. These tests told us that we had a change in the status. So we, now they are blocking, blocked, but we have to continue with these actions to validate 100%. So as the conclusions, we draw this next. Uh, we recommend uh, raising awareness among CEOs and decision makers on the benefits of uh, the good practices for security in the routing of the organization. And to make all the changes in the announcements of IPv4 and IPv6 prefix that need to be controlled and documented. Maintain the ROAs uh, updated, uh, enforced, and uh, in accordance with the announced prefixes that will reduce potential incidents, uh, security incidents in real routing. Do not announce prefixes or blocks that are not being used or are not being assigned or delegated. And we must, you must reinforce with the ISPs the good routing practices, managing the application of Bogans filters, ACLs, anti-spoofing techniques for our interconnection prefixes, uh, interfaces and prefixes. If you have a process of an acquisition, a bidding or a contract, we recommend you to um, draft the specifications, describe the implementation of the techniques and good practices on the routing security as a requirement by the, of the ISP. And even though we are a small operator, we need to maintain a constant monitoring and surveillance of the numeric numbers that we have announced. That's all. Thank you for your time. Muchísimas gracias, Emmanuel, por excelente presentación. Thank Ahora, you, Emmanuel, for that excellent presentation. We'll now see if there are any questions. Let me ask Jorge if anyone has written any questions in the Q&A box. For the time being, we don't have any. So let us wait a couple of seconds. So people can ask their questions. Emmanuel, would you like to add anything else to what you already said? 
Yes, I'd like to thank you and invite all the network operators to join this MANERS initiative. It is very easy to comply with these actions. Many of these actions are already being carried out. You have to document those actions that you carry out. And as a small operator, because we are a university, we comply with this and it is likely that the vendors, the larger vendors, are already complying with many of these actions.